Amazon company. So we decided, hey, let's, you know, let's get ready to the emerging markets and see what, what's happening. Anyways. And so these are some of the challenges we laid out. We want to transition ahead of some of the websites we're looking for to offer to this format. Uh, so transition to a modern web platform also known as Morocco. Uh, we want to grow our lead generation, all the different ways that we do that, and, and uh, increase our agility for all this stuff because of you know, WordPress is not a great platform to kind of build new web marketing platform on that, and what these people do themselves. And all the stuff that goes with that, right? All the web, all the outbound stuff that we're looking at. So we, we want to get a lot of it really done stuff. We want to say, get the marketing strategy. I mean, how hard is that? We just get one of those things. <laughs> and then sit down and create it. And then same thing, just do face a brand. That's pretty easy. <laughs> I love people who've had these companies forever because they're like, yeah, how, how do I do that? So. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, so those are real challenges. And then we want to stabilize standardize our platforms because every kind of person that we're working for has got to achieve their own everything. And it's just a giant mess. Uh, and of course, we want to spend money. So, because a lot of things don't happen. And uh, uh, so, we want to keep costs about comps. And that part probably wouldn't get great or real good on our line of evaluation. I haven't done it super well at that challenge. Uh, and then there's a ton more boring stuff that has nothing to do with the next uh, slides and the rest of this talk that I want to talk about. I just want to focus on Rocco and all the parts that it's Cool. Uh, so, uh, kind of with an approach, this actually gave some thought to this and uh, not to make light of it, but I hired a CMO. Uh, this is an outsourced CMO, so uh, she and her team work 30% um, time for us essentially because that's what we can afford. Uh, CMO, uh, Totally irreplaceable. If you're a medium -sized, small, medium sized company and you want to do marketing, um, you got to get one of these. Sorry. I, I didn't realize it until I started working with this person on the team. It's, there's all the stuff I didn't know I didn't know. Uh, so it's been awesome. And uh, I'll give you her contact information. I know it's getting a little busy. But uh, this one is thanks to uh, Susie Hayes, who works at this company called Gutemar in uh, Los Angeles. And, it's been a non-stop, every day is like something new, it's just everything she does just hits it out of the park. She can't say enough good stuff about getting the right person. Okay, enough about that. Uh, and then um, we're going to focus resources on our lead gen channels, we're going to transition everything to a breakfast CMS, so I'm gonna, that's what I'm going to talk about next. Uh, use, uh, what's, that, what's that term that deals with best of breed? Yeah, best of breed tools. So we're gonna we're gonna make our own CRM or our own landing page platform and do this, but we went up and found that's not and uh, right now not endorsing any of these products, but right now today, uh, campaign monitor, email, hub spot for CRM, intercom for messaging, chatbot stuff. That's what we're doing that. Uh, top to bottom AdWords revamp, um, also more on that later. Um, that's an interesting thing to hear from Jeff. It's pretty common. Uh, and then uh, really focus on uh, Conversions and uh, landing pages are really just drive the door, and there's some measure to figure out what's actually generating leads that turns into business. Um, and then, because of the way people work, this is something I knew nothing about until a few months back. Uh, local search, it's all about local search. I'm, I'm, I don't know what your business is, but local search is huge. It totally eclipses like our Google analytics. Looks like we're not that big, but the local search is like insane. So, uh, so we want to really strengthen that up, and that's an ongoing thing. And then obviously, when you get analytics on it, so you know what's working, what's not working, and that's the hardest thing probably when you're small business on all the One of the hardest things when you're small business is to spend that extra time to make sure you're gathering that data and doing something with like analytics. Okay, that was our approach. It sounds pretty straightforward. It's probably straight out of uh, you know a lot of CTO, CMO wishes, right? And, but this. Michael, we hired me. This was part of the deal. I got to do this stuff. I was looking at what that people wanted. Email, I think, email, six hundred. But I figured that I could definitely hire someone to do that. Probably better and uh, hopefully more So uh, I've promoted Rocco heavily, uh, both from a personal perspective and from some more tangible reasons. Um, and the main, the main thing is uh, it's, it's really it's what you know, right? And that's why when a new CMO comes in, the first thing they want to do. One of the first things you want to do is do CMS. Well, that was on um, And that's fine, but it's because it's what they know. Now I get that, finally, after all of those years. 
Yeah, so Rocco we chose it because mainly because I know about it. Right? That was, was my responsibility. I chose a solid platform, a platform that could support our approach. Uh, and um, since I was also the web guy, that helped. <laughs> Not exclusively, I'm going to pass other people involved. But let's just say day to day operations follows. Yeah, no limits. Do this about a rock all the time. I can tell you right now. I'll give you some examples on the next slide. Um, that part of it alone kind of like sealed it for me. Um, and I think you could probably apply it to other CMSs as well, but I'm going to use it as a rock over today. Um, I uh, got to lean on uh, ProWorks for the more technical and in depth stuff. Uh, and if I didn't have to overcome uh, some sort of major feature um, requirement, it would be easy to find. So I, I still work with those guys, and uh, they've done great work so far. Um, the support from Rocket HQ is actually, I've had a really good experience with that, which is interesting because that's not the common experience. The mind's been excellent. So I can't complain. And I'm not like calling Stefan going to the support desk. So, uh, and then, uh, spoiler alert, we're using new scheme. But their support is also there. And that's because, well, I'll tell you what it is in a minute. That's because I paid the support. So that's the next bit. And then the other thing is um, working in a Rocco all those years, I never really got to use, except for the very early days, I never got to use uh, Rocco, the forum, as a support tool. I was always like, I'll answer your question. Now I got to ask you. I get some answers to stuff. I'm like, no one's going to do this. How do I do How in the world am I going to do this with SSLT? Sure enough, like the next morning, it's a beauty of it being a West Coast I'm up in Seattle. Um, I wake up in the morning, the question's answered on the forum. I'm like, ah. <laughs> it's again, it's such a great resource, and I think it's actually a Umbrella feature that doesn't get talked about enough. Umbrella has to talk about the size of the community, and that's great, but actually, it's their willingness to really pitch in and help with small community. So that's like, and it's free. Right? You've got to invest in, in kind of making sure you're asking the right question or asking it the right way. But you do, you get an awesome answer a lot of times. And I can't say enough good Anyways, and then uh, because I get to make up this list, uh, one of the things was that we weren't using WordPress no matter what. That's another thing. Uh, right. So uh, two quick, then two quick things because these are kind of the foundational parts of why uh, you know, why did I look at a rock? Because there's lots of cloud CMSs these days, right? Uh, certain edge can have cloud, even though they don't call it WordPress cloud, it's just WordPress.com. But the the pay for version of it is called cloud. Um, so for us, where we are right now today, we have four, they call projects, and we pay per project is how it works on Profit Cloud. For projects, we have 20 unique sites that are spread across these four projects in kind of a logical fashion, somewhat logical. Uh, we, we have four users, sometimes three, sometimes five, but they're easy to add and remove. That's great. 150 bucks a month, um, to me it's a no-brainer, right? My sites are simple. I can easily host them on ASP.net discount host. Three bucks a month, but then I'd have to do it on my side. It's not about that. Uh, the fact that they do auto upgrades, uh, they have a deployment workflow that works when you work with contractors, which is what I do when I get to hire my designer and the desk. Um, so I can integrate their work at any time, which is really nice. Um, uh, the fact that they have this nice distinction between editors, you know, people touching content media, which I look at the outsource marketing people. And uh, developers, which are either me or people I trust uh, to do it, but it's really nice. They don't have to worry about stability. They're not going to break it, most likely. And not that they would intentionally, but they're not using a proper And then uh, the baseline feature, I actually never really got the baseline. I don't know, just so you guys know, I actually created the original prototype of Rocco Cloud. And Neil's always just three to four years ago. A lot longer than that. <laughs> so, yeah, it took a long time to get this product to be the right product that it is today. Uh, the original prototype. Uh, so, I, and we, that's when we came up with the idea of baseline. Even then, I didn't really understand the power of these things. So, I have one site that's my master baseline, and then the other three, and in the future, there'll be more, but the other three are all um, children in that. So, any change I make to the master, I can easily. Push out to the other sites. I mean, by easy, I mean like click a button. Well, actually, you can check the box and click a button. But it's been it's been great. That part of the world is totally justified. 
uh, from uh, and it's been really stable. Uh, it's been super flexible. It's been able to accommodate these weird requirements in the market. A CMO comes up with, uh, I don't want to say that they're marketing and on tech, because that's not exactly it. But it's, all, it's all tied together. And then, and then a quick thing on Uskin. Uh, I was actually a Uskin critic up until this project. Um, I, I didn't like it because of what they tried to do. But I'll leave that aside and let me just tell you more objectively. Um, uh, they're basically um, starter kits. They're called skins. That's their name, but it's actually more of a complete starter kit. It's got everything in it. It's not just the link. Um, so it's, it's fast. You can have on sites like now. Not waiting for your design, cut a on CSS. It's like ready to go. Uh, it's got gives you pretty good control. Uh, it's super flexible. It's already responsive out of the box, um, which is important for, uh, for most people. Uh, certainly for us, it is, but we'll see like 50% of the time. Uh, pretty easy to customize, and on the downside, it's super cumbersome. Uh, if you're a, a classic of Rocco dev and you were like brought up in Rocco training, you kind of how Rocco actually works, it's awful. It's terrible. Uh, <coughs> sorry. Um, that's just that's just the nature of it. But there's so many good parts of how it way back. I kind of I was able to look at it. And over there on the side, that's like. They use this component model where they render like all these child uh, components into the parent page. And it, it works really well. I don't know which CMS that came from. There's obviously a CMS out there somewhere that people have been inspired by. Because I see this a lot. Uh, but you know, current and Rocco, technically at all, um, don't do it that way. It's very cumbersome. It makes your initial render time quite slow. You can make it quite slow. Uh, and if you don't need to, it just makes it. Overly complex. Anyways, uh, and then the last thing is this sort of structure is for work. Uh, my editor is coming from WordPress, so I don't really know what was going on there. So that was kind of fun. So. And then licensing, uh, but all that aside, it still is an insurance price. Uh, by the time we bought all the licenses, it came up about $30 to a site price. So it's, it's really cheap. Um, and I think they could probably charge more, but there's not that much volume. Cool. So all that played into uh, the plan, and the plan we named the second wave, and that's because this company rather than existed as a healthy company. They were in growth mode, but how how do they actually like do it? So it's how do people hang out with us? They seem to have become partners. How do we get it so we can actually you know support that growth going forward? So we're not uh, working crazy hours and trying to keep up with it. Uh, so that was it was pretty simple, really. This is this is on the marketing website. Just we're just going to do this. We'll create a a strong Rocco baseline for our first three markets. That was Los Angeles, Phoenix, and Seattle. Um, uh, well, in that, we're going to build in some more complex features that will support our, our on you know, planning campaigns. Maybe, maybe testing, so testing is going to just be part of it. So we're going to make it so easy that content editors can do this. Um, so we're not having the developer. Uh, we'll make this campaign creator thing. I think that's what we called it. Uh, never really. Idea. That's just a big way you can tie the campaigns, plan anything with all the tracking information. Right? It's just going to work. Um, backup and recovery tools. Because of the business we're in, we have compliance, we have state regulations, so we actually have to back up our databases and all of our other data somewhere that's it actually physically located in the US. And why? That's a regulation for a whole thing. But okay. Uh, Rocco Cloud hosted in uh, Europe, in West Europe, they call it. So I think that's the Netherlands. Then, and then we were going to do a lot of validation to make sure we had solid SEO, social media integration was done, our analytics was rock solid, we had tags in there. And then we were going to make sure we had our chatbot ready to go along with um, you know, transactional messaging. Everything was great. All of this was going to be driven from the Brock, right? So that it's like one interface for Just that the nirvana of the Brock. I just look at this and just think, like, yes, I can't wait. And then we were going to test it, measure it. Adjust it once it was ready to go, which we were targeting about the end of December. Um, then we were able to the market. It's so easy. This is a weird interview. Again, that boat almost bought. And uh, yeah, it was going so good, in fact, that um, it was a beautiful September out in Seattle. Uh, so our family and I said, you know, let's think, let's make one last kayak trip or so. So we loaded up the kayaks um, and headed out to Salmon Island because. Sound it off, and we're not just going to take a quick little weekend trip to 
come back, everyone's going to get back to training. School starts. <clears throat> Just clearing the team. I was like, hey, Ryan, you know, I'm going to be out, totally offline, not taking my phone, going out on my kayak, I just want to chill. He's like, yeah, no problem. Enjoy the time I'm like, what could possibly happen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm sitting on the phone there at 9, 10 in the morning. Uh, and then I pull up one of our websites. This is what it looks like. Pretty exciting. It's not typically, it doesn't typically. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that was, that was fun. Um, we have 20 sites, they all look different. Uh, and on the left side, so I just like, do I initiate divorce proceedings now? <laughs> or do I you know, call someone and say, hey, can you just help us out? Well, it's, anyway, so we've been completely hacked. Uh, they had only these sites for months, maybe years. Um, and so they're, we're not really not. They're gonna, they're all just going to hack it. So that, that was a that was a great, great realization. So I, my weekend maybe wasn't quite as enjoyable as it would have otherwise been, uh, but I did spend in Gibbs. Uh, 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 so they got the websites back simply by uh, just deleting the most updated files. But of course, these sites were only, they're never going to be hacked. Anything you know about how WordPress works, you know. There's quite a lot of exploits unless you're on the latest version. So if you are on WordPress, first of all, start moving on. <laughs> but if you are, make sure you're using the latest version. That's all I can say. Uh, that's that's really the top of it. And the same goes for a product. Right? It's not totally fair to, to single out WordPress. It just so happened that this is was WordPress. And so when I got back, I talked to uh, Michael, who had done the website. So I'm like, hey, so what's the last time you updated those things? He's like, um, I think it was like 2009. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, anyways, that's so exciting. What that happens. So, over the next nine days, uh, when I get back on Sunday night, I looked at what we had. Like, how are we going to do this thing? Every site is a little different because of the local search. Um, I know kind of most of them are uh, market specific sites. So, how are we going to do this thing? We signed and create a custom uh, importer. This thing I named the Cool. Uh, anyway, I just all that did. Uh, I might as well put it out on my share. Who even anyone cares? But it's something to do periodically, right? So I just took the uh, WordPress export XML, which fortunately we had on that um, and created the thing that would recreate that uh, fun new skin structure based on what was in or in that XML. But that was a good thing because, like I said, I had to do 17 times. Uh, we called. The use in people, so I say great support. They actually issued like a license on the spot, even though I didn't have any information. Sort of off date. Good for that, because theirs works on a per domain licensing. I did pay them. Um, <laughs> and then uh, I had to figure out, I've never used baselines for real, so I had to figure out how to make baselines work. Baselines in Morocco, but I had to figure out how to make that work. Then I had to figure out like, how are we actually going to divide up all these 17 sites, because I can't put all but all 17 in one. Instance for different reasons, like if one gets hacked, you don't want everything to get hacked if you've been there. Uh, not to mention the fact that, uh, in the Bra little known fact, in Bravo 5, you can have up to 15 domain names per site. Yeah, so I'd say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'd say that. And then our sites are pretty low traffic, they don't use a lot of resources, so I wasn't worried about that. Like, I think our biggest site gets 10 of those sites. It's just Okay, cool. Then I had to make a decision. Are we going to stick with Houston or not? Because that is something we're going to have to live with for a while. And then, naturally, of course, on lockdown access, make sure we're following security best practices, make sure there's no credentials in our uh, repos. Because the way Bravo Cloud works, it's pretty easy to get that from that, fortunately. Um, so I had to do a lot of kind of all this and migrate all the sites. And it was a great experience because I really learned, first of all, how um, how you can kind of do deployments all the time on the Bravo Cloud. It's not like I'm talking more about it in this session. Let's just say um, it's a pretty flexible platform. I'm super happy that it was able to say. And then I pulled in uh, our, some of our customer service folks uh, to, to do QA because it's really hard to do, at least with your me, it's hard to do the same thing 17 times and not miss anything in the process. So they were a big help with that. Cool. So I'll, I'll just talk about the, the, um, how we used it. Why it made sense, and I think it was a good choice in the end. I mean, could have certainly started new WordPress extensions migrated all the content, but there was no guarantee that uh, still practically did with whatever that hack was. Right? We don't, we're not into the legacy necessarily. So this was insane. 
yeah. Um, so for the devs, in your case you're one. Um, when I use baselines on a Rocket Cloud, I, I physically separate out my projects. So I have the website and project, and that's per project. So I have one there. I used to have a smart note thing here that showed this, but then I saw Neil's a smart note and I deleted it. So <laughs> I'm like, they're going to know that smart note. <laughs> so I deleted it. It was just a confusing uh, hierarchy. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's uh, the one thing. Um, so web project, one web solution, one bedroom project, and then one core project that has an output DLL that all of the web projects include. That's super simple. So in that core project, I do my models, so I redirect models, build it for that. So all the models are compiled, not for some. It just means I got to have the same, that's what I want, I want to do the first. So I, and everything else is custom, right? All my work flows and stuff. Cool. And then I found out this other cool thing about cloud. Um, you can actually have config transforms per project. So since I have four projects, I have four different config transforms. I can also have them per environment, so if I have dev, staging, and live, and that's those per project. Gives you pretty good control, so it actually can cost your dental right here. Um, anyways, I'd skip the documentation. What can you say? That's where I found it. I was like, oh, this is not yeah, that's a problem. Cool. Um, yeah, and then I tried it. That's because I'm like, oh, we have this most common, common, kind of, we have, we have like thousands of these testimonials and they, they just, I thought, I'll just head this for that. That was saying, oh, what? The headless didn't work for me for this one. Uh, that's because it was. My uh, my quick estimation of it, uh, Gnomes and .NET Core, one of the non uh, ASP.NET and C um, approaches. It, does, it works great, but if you're using ASP.NET and C, it doesn't work because there's no concept of kind of async use. So I learned that, and hopefully you want to do that in time. So if you're using it, it's not going to be difficult. If you have a straight uh, JavaScript front end, awesome. Uh, and then you scan, again, again uh, turned out to be a pretty good choice, right? I'm happy with where, where it is. Um, we didn't have any design resources, so I could have done the higher one, but then I needed to start from scratch. We had barely just gotten our creative brief, and I ran guidelines like literally two days before it done. So I didn't have a chance to do that kind of stuff in terms of spot. Uh, so that would have been making even a bigger commitment. Uh, yeah, and then when I decided to do them, like, I'm just going to use you skin, and I'm just going to make it my own. Right, we're just going to make it what works for us. So we created a set of extension styles, and they make it pretty easy to override styles, which is nice. Um, so I created like override styles for our specific stuff. Uh, and then uh, figured out how their component structure is, how those page components are made, they're just doc types, pretty much. And um, then we could add in our own components, so our editors can add in, like, they have a add banner component, and a, ooh, you guys would like this one. I made a uh, circle image. <laughs> that one's popular. There's a lot of circle things in the uh, yeah. And uh, the, the other thing that's really nice is seeing as, you know, uh, we work a little in sync, uh, as do I think a lot of companies, but um, we're not necessarily all working on the same thing the same day. Um, outsource folks, me, and other people. Um, so this allowed us to do faster design for them, I think, because they kind of give you an idea of what they wanted. I knocked out on our dev sites a, a prototype page based on the styles that you skin has, so they could come up with any bespoke style, which, which is a discussion I understand. Uh, but then they look at it and be like, oh, we'll so we're going to drop this down, we'll space it, all that stuff, which was great because it let us get the pages out of there a lot faster. My totally unscientific estimation on the stats. Uh, so the bad side, uh, yeah, whatever, we only had to work with the styles that existed, and those were my styles. So all of you who work with me, uh, you know what that means. Um, not the style. So, but uh, on the good side, uh, it, it's done. It got done. So it gets stuff out like the next day rather than like things. So that was a big thing for me, because uh, I'm spending money on AdWords that just don't own. And so this is allowing us to get, get this stuff out. We want to get out. And a big kudos to your skin for um, helping us be agile on this block pivot. Like, it is not a bad choice if you're not sure how you're going to do this stuff. Because in Morocco, we talk a, a lot about the craft and do the things you love and doing exactly what you want. That's awesome. That's what takes a lot of time. I love it. And once you get that, there's a big difference between buying $30 and I think if you could just buy one off, that's like a $100. But $100 you skin. That's a very low risk 
versus investing in planning and project that's about multiple resources over multiple months to get paid. Is that am I just giving <laughs> anyway, so big kudos to this. Uh, I, I was kind of done on the back uh, because it was pretty fun. Cool. And then the last piece is because of this compliance thing I mentioned earlier, um, we, we created this uh, exciting new thing called the Cloud Union Backup. And I shouldn't say uh, I didn't create it, I just came up with the idea. And uh, Proverbs created it, so they created this really cool uh, backup for team that basically is an Azure function app. It matters that much to people, but just so you know, it's serverless. You guys have heard of serverless, right? So you can say you have a serverless app. Um, it takes a, this array of uh, TV connection strings, it creates a backpack file and sticks my Azure storage uh, somewhere in the US. So we have to worry about the um, It's super simple. It turns out just does a lot of research um, on the Proverbs side to figure out how to actually work. So, so we're going to share Benjamin, who's a dev at Proverbs, and I are working on it well. <laughs> that means he's waiting on me to see him. I promised him weeks back. So, get in there. <laughs> busy time. Yeah, it's super simple, really easy to manage. Uh, and uh, it's almost free. So this is another one of those cool things. So here's my, this is a forecast. I literally just took a snapshot yesterday, or whatever it was, Tuesday. Uh, that's the Azure uh, projected spend. It's going to be 36 cents to back up four databases every day for a month. Uh, and store. I think most companies can afford that. Uh, cool. And then um, what we learned on this, which I think is an important thing to cover, is um, one is that it's a lot, again, a lot different coming from both the agency side, where you actually do get to be like done with the pay us. Uh, this, um, we're never done. We're never going to be done ever as far as I can tell. Uh, for a lot of different reasons, because there's always more. And I'm never going to waste it back. I'm, I'm never going to get that program. That's fine. I'm not joking about this. <laughs> but, but we're never going to do that. Uh, and that's that's one thing we learned uh, definitively. Uh, everything is information. Uh, branding is actually a thing. <laughs> All these years I've been around this stuff. I think I would have learned this. But uh, I, I've learned that and don't know if you will. Uh, it's, it's hard. It's really hard to do. Um, and if you don't know about branding, you can try to do it. So, uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, marketing strategy needs uh, someone for a team who's experienced for sure. Uh, it's definitely going to take some investment. It's not something you can do as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it takes multiple iterations to get right or even to get to a workable stage. Uh, you have to have a process. So whatever that process is, make sure you're sticking with it. Uh, I credit our, uh, our marketing company, Juice Mod, for that because they brought all the stuff that we did that right team that came up with that. Um, and then, I should have taken out the word agile, but whatever tech you use, it's always going to be a good choice if it's flexible. Right? And that's why Rocco is a great choice for a CMS or, as uh, Rocco is now calling it, more like a digital operating system, which is a good way to think about it. Right? The web is such a small part of everything. Uh, websites, I should say, are such a small part of everything. But the, the risk, and this, I uh, learned this for real this time, uh, this time on the consuming side, um, actually, it's really hard to find experience with Rocco. You guys are busy, <laughs> I couldn't say. I mean, I don't know how many times I've ever been finished, but it's a cool. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say it's, it's, a, it's a downside, right? It's good to, good to know who the guys are the one to get into when you don't think that is that you either learn it and build your team, so you get control over it, and that's sort of around it, so a few other things going on. Or uh, you get a great partner like ProRips, that's your dev partner, and it's your uh, And you have to plan. Okay, that's probably what I'm talking about. Uh, Rocco Cloud is real solid, it's super affordable, and for my opinion, it's really good. It, in my, the way I think about it, the baseline thing that I think about every day, what we do, if we're pushing out new stuff every day, that baseline is really cool. Because I think about how we used to do deployments and like how hands on it is. And now I literally just check that box and go, and then I go into the next thing, which is, you know, it's going to be backwards. So then the other stuff, it's just crazy, right? All the deployment workflows, the auto upgrade, all the, and the, the last security advisory they had about the client dependency a couple weeks back, that was already done before I even got up in the morning. It's all passionate about it. Sensitive to that. 
uh, yeah. And then a few more things. Um, yeah, your skin is uh, it's, it's fast. I can't argue with how much you turn it all. It's from what I got. I'm super happy with that. It's a good implementation. Not great. That's the trade off. Uh, it's flexible, and I found it supports it. It's very responsive. It's like one or two guys. Uh, so you're clicking. SEO, uh, uh, you guys are sure you know way more about this than I do, but didn't realize how important it was for a panic touch. Uh, it's super arcane. Still don't understand why it's not like an SEO. Um, and, uh, and also, no matter where you are in SEO, there goes more than you can affect the And then the last two things, real quick, are uh, getting an experienced people. Uh, in my opinion, this is a little bit worth it, but you're also going to pay for that. So, again, there are a little bit of balance that I hold into the accounts. Um, as long as I can, you know, I'll keep paying those extra people. As long as they're showing the results. And I know most people are going to based on the show of hands earlier. You're on the delivery. You're on the export side, right? You're not on the export side. But I'd say bring those people in and leave them in the community. It's really, really good. You know, it's preaching the requirement. And then the last thing is the pay per click stuff, all AdWords, all that stuff. And that's way, way, I don't know why they think it's so easy. Or I've used AdWords in the past. I mostly get products. <coughs> and I think it's just complicated. It's so complicated. Holy smokes. And I mean, let's just say I've had three experiences. Three bad experiences. So, if anyone here is a typically expert or you have some insight, please come up to me later. I'll buy you a drink, a dinner, or whatever. I need to know what is up with that. I totally don't get it. It's like the biggest movie target. I was on a web conference with our uh, our latest failed SEO. <laughs> I just, I don't know. Sorry. I just, so, if you know or you are an expert and you're also not a pro fan, definitely. Yeah, so that's it. I'm just trying to make it brief. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for coming. I uh, love insight, questions, comments. Anything like that, feel free. Um, or you can send them to me anonymous. Like 15 domains per site. It's yeah, 15 host names. So that includes subs and things. Are you still using Unbounce? Yeah. Why? Uh, because the, that's, what, that's what we have our investment in the landing pages. So, right now. So we have the media this morning. So. I, just, I was always curious between Unbounce, which is a landing page, and you can link it to your system. But versus hosting them on, um, uh, we have uh, we have a combo. But um, so in, tell me, you guys, it sounds like you got uh, just as much experience. So that's not hard to say on this. But um, is it that typical? Paper per click company is going to come in and be like, hey, we only have plain landing pages. We're going to do the they campaign. Should, we, we don't talk about it, but they okay. should. Uh, seriously, I, they shouldn't own your stuff. You should always retain ownership over your. Or just yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what about resources? Yeah. Resources. Resources is hard, but if you if you have it there and you're you're confident that well, they build a template out for and even multiple templates, right? To AV out and then modify select elements of the content and test it and deploy that, and then your agents would then be replicating the template itself to create a campaign specific landing page. And then you are not paying unbounds the fee, so you're retaining that with only your collateral and um, you can repeat the user in a way that that's pretty cost effective. Yeah, I just, I don't know when I did something like that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, we have it where, like, um, we've used it so that designers who can't uh, do it like well, we do with that. Typically, we'd like push them towards that, but then we find, like, okay, let's look at the hours that it took. For you to like, kind of like play with that mobile view and all that stuff. Because I mean, if you're using a framework and it seems like you skins on Bootstrap, those kind of things, like it's yes. a lot of non issues. Um, so that's my experience. I'm interested. Well, that's good stuff. The cost kind of analysis, I've never had unbounced for that to make sense. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, uh, with the, with the fourth SEO that I did, I had the fourth PE conference when I was starting next year. Um, we 
we wrote a little different kind of compensation agreement. So they own everything, that's just fine. But they also have to meet certain targets for their engagement. Um, that's it. Yeah, so I'm just glad that it worked. And not their kids. And it worked with uh, what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that much money, so it's not what it's going to be. You have to have multiple clients. Have you done any sort of a cost benefit analysis of uh, being a developer yourself, uh, running updates on a Rocco versus cloud as to kind of that soft side versus hard side cost? Yeah, uh, the, I wouldn't say I haven't done like a spreadsheet analysis, but kind of a you know, whiteboard one would be uh, if I spend more than one hour a week for that. If I would have spent that's offset. Um, I don't have much money per hour, but that's all we have. So that's 37, 15 hours to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that was uh, that was my uh, my rough cost uh, for me. But the, the action cost is that the right word? The justification for it financially changes if you have more sites. That makes sense. So as I have more sites, the complexity goes up. So the amount of time I would spend would also go up. With one site, it's hard to say, maybe more of a wash. I like the security of knowing that they're going to the patch. They find vulnerabilities in the because they have a lot of safety. Uh, and the other thing is, uh, I, I, for my own personal process, the way I would do it, I, it's actually been heavily influenced by cloud because of how I was so involved in that project. But it's a natural fit, and I don't know if it's Is that cool? Yeah, I, I'm not a developer, I'm a part of an agency. Yeah. The developers have been using as a uh, vote of no confidence in them <coughs> to go toward cloud. They're like, oh, we can do this. So, yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, like, it pro works, makes sort of a hybrid, it's sort of a hybrid approach. Um, and uh, that's more typical in an agency, I'd say. So some clients won't make sense. For whatever, whatever reason, the clients are they just their skills. The cloud's great for like small and medium sites. Although, wait, let's just leave it at that. The kids, small and medium. Uh, and you have to have a team that can accommodate that kind of workload because it actually took a fair amount of work and power to, to change our existing process, which was the auto build CI CD kind of thing, uh, to work with cloud. Because those two things, the way that they've grown up, uh, aren't necessarily a natural fit. So it's probably if you're using cloud and you're also using uh, like a CD, you know, audio or something like that. Uh, you probably create a new audio to work with cloud. That's all. Okay. Yeah. But uh, from strictly like, does this make sense financially at our does it make sense for me to pay the money to the price a month? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Plus other things. That's not the only other. Yeah, I would do it. I would do it probably right now, just so you know. I would put this four fifty uh, or less a month. Then you would see that's my time. Yeah. What kind of proposals do you have with that build if you like try for Oh it's it would, I mean the sites are idle almost all the time. So I, honestly the the way you have to get better performance is by sending it a few like every minute. <laughs> which I've considered doing because it's that because of your skin, if things aren't up in the cache, that first request is going to be like everything else. I was wondering if you make e commerce and stuff like that where you have to yeah. a lot of traffic transaction. Well, it's, again, it's small, medium sites, that's what's it's made. But you have, I mean, that cloud stamp, they call it, is massive. It's got the cloud. I mean, most likely you can throw at it whatever you can. It's never going to blink. So that one time it was uh, because someone else is also doing the same thing. Because it has the noisy neighbor, noisy neighbor syndrome that almost every cloud is a shared Yeah, sure. Yep. Yep. There's my bit too. Can, can you, I'm like, uh, so I'm very little to do cloud. We run a VM with like 20 sites on it. And that's definitely like, uh, so you say 20 sites. But we're running like client sites, and to me that's sort of separate. Like it's it's not it's co-located on the same server or whatever, but it's completely different. So can you kind of walk through like an example of what's one site and what's another site? Yeah, I didn't and like where's the separation? Because um, yeah. like the ho this host names are you saying that that's kind of the separation? Yeah. 
So they, in uh, what you think of as a site, like IIS. Yeah, like an IIS. Website. That's what they call a project. Oh, right. Okay. So that's why when I run the numbers, I'm like, no, this is way more expensive. Yeah, that's a project. Yeah. Got but it. In that project, I have uh, four to seven hosts. Right. Which are okay. Uh, you know, on the front end, they're unique domains, but it's all the same project. For sure. Right? And yeah. Rocco is just a top level node. There's like one for awesome, one for Dallas, one for like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So that's how it's real kind of logical. And that's why I don't want to. No, I always end up going there. Anyways, you can that's right there. Yeah, if you want to talk more about it, just drive me after. Yeah, for sure. That's the logical separation. Is that no, it makes total sense for me. That's all. I mean, you can't do that with every kind of site because uh, sites have more traffic than ours. Mm -hmm. But ours are lead gen sites. I mean, someone comes there and they put them through a long process and then they land there and then you want them to develop this form. That's kind of all the interest in there. So we're not, we're not trying to capture traffic per se. We just want someone to tell us who they are. So asking them what they're talking about. Yeah. It's a totally different business model than anything I've ever done in the past. So we get my head around it. But yeah. that's yeah. basically it's from like the point of view. We just want their phone numbers. That's all we want. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. I'm assuming you're using proper forms. Waste forms, yeah. Everything's cool there. It's cool. It's all custom workflows there. I could not get a form out of the workflows. Uh, because every site has a little unique, like this one goes to, this one gets forwarded to this CSR text number, this one goes to this email. So it's just the way we have the customer service structure set up. So basically created, yeah, some form uh, or flows that come into that. That's part of our core uh, idea. Yep. All of you have come to the organization that were coordinated, very like work pro work for us or neutral work for us. Totally neutral. So, I mean, it's interesting mm -hmm. because when we hired this uh, marketing company, huge marketing company, they uh, just assumed we were being mm -hmm. then I think like nine and a half people out of ten of these workers, probably, right? So, I was like, no, it's so fun. Yeah, uh, that's part of having the problem. Is like well, I kind of feel like it's just a lot of it's my bias. Right? I kind of feel like we're on the little screen. Right? Sometimes I think a problem is like I'm a little secret. Now everyone knows. But that's that's the thing. They don't know it because they don't know it. Yeah, that's the only reason. But it comes back to that thing of like what it's what you know. I know a rock up made sense because I can my responsibility to manage that platform. Yeah. If I were a different person and I worked on some Linux and some WordPress, obviously I, the first thing I would do is go get a WordPress service that auto updates for me. That's the very first thing I would do. Um, because without that, you know, just, you just have to waste every, every day. So no matter what if I do, I, I think self hosting, unless I'm literally doing it at scale, it doesn't make sense to me. Right? And even then, if you're going to like a VM on discount, you're still essential because you're responsible for it. Your agency is a different model, of course, because then you can build your management and you can pay and charge for that. All that kind of stuff. Or if the internal resources are not fully utilized, of course that doesn't make sense. But in my case, that wasn't, that wasn't the case. I knew I was going to pay for whatever that was. And choosing a property that didn't have uh, <coughs> an agency in that regard. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, I don't know if that's your question. No, yeah, I think that. I just thought it was from a perspective of how I can tell that. Yeah. Well, you can have a screenshot. That works pretty well. It's just the voter. I mean, I don't have anything personal against WordPress except for the fact that they keep my life so miserable. That's not personal. No. It's not personal. Almost. And my marriage. Well, anyways, yeah, I guess we have four minutes. I don't know if you guys are cool. You get up. It's not class, it's real bad. But again, thanks for coming in. Uh, I'd love to, if anyone else can mention some stuff you have in a minute, I'd love to know more because I've just got to get into it. I've learned a lot in the last month's mode, like five minutes mode, just because it's been a really fascinating journey. I don't know if I'll ever do this talk again, maybe I'll update a blog post or something. But what we learned really when we're done, when we actually got to where we thought we were supposed to be, what, they, what that actually looked like. And, on the plus side, and I didn't really tie this back 
this is one of the things I cut out, but super quick. This extra stuff actually works, right? We're actually, I mean, we are getting more leads. We're paying less for those leads, which means we get more business, which is the whole idea of the creating this position for the company. Because that was the deal. So now I'm sort of like, I take that position. Not, to to get, not really, but you know what I mean? is like, it actually works. Like, the result is, do we have more work? Yes, that's the answer. And that's the end result. And we just started. So, so we can see that now as we build and build on it. And eventually, you know that um, you're just do this slide, the main creator thing, and the main testing. That will eventually come together if I don't have anything to say about it. Uh, so that you won't be using that now. It's all these weird like, things that exist. It's just going to be like the one platform, and the marketing people that work for us know our business, and we will dash where they'll be in their work. That's the idea. Not there right now, obviously. Got a little cut off at the end. But I've learned a lot in that process, too. Uh, it was hopefully useful to at least hear one person's perspective of why they brought a good choice for this one. Um, and, yeah. Having the hat definitely changed the tone of this topic. Thanks, Tracy.